I think it's time to sink our teeth, no pun intended, into the NECA Toys Texas Chainsaw Massacre Ultimate Leatherface. This is the tragic tale of five young friends who venture into rural Texas one hot afternoon and become victims of one of the most bizarre and brutal crimes in Travis County history. Many of them meet a horrific end at the hands of the murderous lunatic Leatherface in what comes to be known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now you're absolutely right, I have already had a look at the ultimate Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface, but I thought it was fair time, time has come once again to have a look at the figure again because I really do think that this is a fantastic Leatherface. Taking the tape measure to the side of the figure, we know that the figure stands almost exactly seven inches. I suppose you could say, well, because of his hair, he's a little bit taller than that, but I think seven inches is a good gauge. Figure comes with a ton of different accessories, one of which is a alternate head sculpt, which we looked at at the very beginning of this video. Uh, underside, it says number two as a second choice for what you can display the figure with. A really nice representation of the alternate mask that Leatherface sports. A very crude looking thrown together mask. It really consists of two halves stitched together in the middle with the indication that there is a face underneath that. I uh, do want to stress the fact that you can't remove it. It's a softer plastic that they put over top of the face, but again, you cannot remove it from the, the face underneath. Um, I wouldn't even want to take the chance of trying to peel it off because I don't think that there'd be anything underneath that other than the disappointment that I would have experienced with damaging this alternate head sculpt. Uh, you can see that the clawed or hooked part on the top of the head there. Again, a really rough, crude looking, very scary looking uh, alternate head sculpt for uh, Leatherface. If you do want to display him with that, I guess if the go-to necessarily isn't that for you, just simply pop the head off. I want to commend NECA for the fact that they're using this type of peg rather than the big, very big bulbous ball joint uh, that they have used for previous figures. It's perfectly fine for figures that you may never want to remove the heads for, but say if you ever want to replace the head, um, this narrow peg gets just as much mileage that a regular ball joint would experience because the ball joint actually is sitting in the neck rather than the head, and it's a lot easier changing out the head than rather pulling it off of the ball joint. A little FYI that you probably didn't know about. I had a retro cloth, uh, lev uh, retro cloth Freddy Krueger. I think it was the one that was the surgical doctor. Uh, he was in his surgical surgical doctor outfit, um, and I I actually had taken the head off and I broke I broke the ball joint inside the head. So I'm really glad that they go the route now of these slender stems rather than going the route of a ball joint. Anyways, there are the two different head sculpts. Purists may probably gravitate a little bit more towards this one, but both of them, I mean, really, any argument could be made as to why you would want to get two of them, simply because you can display them with the two alternate head sculpts. Um, probably not a popular choice, but I'd love to see NECA eventually run through and do all the leather faces. I've gotten more of them in the retro cloth, it seems, than anything else, because, well, retro cloth are easier to produce. You're using, you're using essentially the same buck body, and then you're just changing out the arms, the head, and then just giving a costume a swap out. Um, but eventually, I'd love to see them produce the 7-inch version, 7-inch figure versions of all the leather faces, especially the uh, cross-dressing, uh, I don't know if you want to say transvestite, but the cross-dressing of leather face from uh, Next Generation. I'd love to see them also produce that in plastic form. It's always been one of my favorite designs of Leatherface. Very creepy, um, him with the, uh, the the stockings and everything else like that. Anyways, we're not really looking at that. Of course, that does not exist. Instead, we're looking here at the ultimate Leatherface, which is just an impressive sight to be seen. So impressive, in fact, 
the NECA toys also ventured out and gave us uh, an Atari version of Leatherface, although the color swap out, giving us a green instead of a blue, although the packaging and, of course, there's controversy as to which color that Atari Leatherface should have been, nonetheless, it used the exact same body. They just simply painted it or cast it in the, uh, the green plastic. Uh, the head sculpt, again, is really, really good here. You've got the stitch work running around the outer area, the, the parameter of the mask itself. Again, this one is reads a little bit more as the traditional mask, I suppose. You've got the quasi-flapped ears on the sides of his mask, but of course you can peel those away and you can see his real ears underneath that on either side there. I'd really love, to, again, to see them do all the leather faces of it, maybe even giving us the uh, Chainsaw Massacre 3D, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D uh, leather face as well, with that older, slightly older look to him. Not a very good movie, but I still found it enjoyable. The hair is very nicely done, a very full head of hair happening here. Uh, the coloring has been kept very minimal. I mean, again, keeping to a slightly off color of, uh, you know, flesh that has aged and started to darken. You can see his teeth in there as well. And again, his eyes. Very, just overall, I'm very, very happy with this figure. I've always been very happy with this figure. And all the more reasoning why I wanted to go back and have a look at him again. The majority of the figure is plastic. Um, he does have the now utilized uh, articulation in the legs and the knees. Uh, the only other thing that's not plastic is obviously his apron on the front here, which has just been literally splattered with blood from head to toe or top of apron to bottom of apron. It does have a look of leather on the underside. It's it actually the material feels something like a like a like a picnic table cloth, like a like a tablecloth sort of material. Very slick on the one side and uh, underneath kind of has that synthetic sort of uh, sort of feel to it. It ties up around his head and ties off, much like an apron, around the back into an actual knot. W would I take this off? Absolutely not, because my knot tying absolutely sucks. It wouldn't look as good as this. It would be all over the place. It probably would have bunny ears as well. That's, that's how usually I tie my knots. Um, as for the rest of the figure, again, like if we just slightly peel away, I suppose, his apron. You can see a fully sculpted and tie, fully molded tummy and shirt. Everything is finished on there. Theoretically, if you again wanted to take this off, you know, you would get a full body underneath that. His arms are very dirty as they, as they really should be. And uh, he's got his little bracelet on here, which again, I think is teeth, if, I, if memory serves me correctly, but it's a very soft sort of uh, bracelet. Bracelet's not the most ma masculine of terms I suppose to be using, but it's the best way I can describe it. It's very small, intricate little marking, the little teeth there sculpted in it, and it's been cast in a uh, gold plastic. Very soft, very soft material. The arms do come across a little on the thin side, but it's something I could easily live with. It's not something, it's not a, certainly a deal breaker for me. The shirt is very dirty, very wrinkly. Uh, the pants stay relatively clean. Um, I'm sure they've used these legs before. I can't 100% say, yes, they've used it for a Jason, but I'm wondering if maybe the top half they probably used for something. Um, they, they've given them very blocked off kneecaps here. They look slightly irregular. I mean, they don't look natural, but again, your apron's gonna really be covering over top of it. So it's not necessarily something that's gonna, you know, off-putting to, to look at on a regular basis. Let's talk accessories. We'll put him down there for a second. Of course, he comes with his trademark chainsaw, a yellow chainsaw, splattered and riddled in blood. The bottom blade, as you can see, the teeth, as, pre as mentioned at the beginning of this review, the teeth have pierced their way through something, leaving a very large amount of blood on the bottom and really all around on the chainsaw itself. Very, very bloody. And of course, that probably a lot of that has made its way to the uh, the apron there. Uh, he also comes with a hook. It's not really anything you can hang it from. It's just, it's just a hook. I mean, you could really put it in his hand as he's dragging somebody in. Also comes with a cleaver. 
which to the credit of the cleaver is very clean. So you can see as they are slaughtering people, they do take the time to clean their utensils. And it's got a slightly worn away kind of wood handle to it. it looks very realistic. Very uh, somewhat sharp blade. It's not sharp to the touch though. Also comes with a small knife. Very, uh, very makeshift kind of crude looking carving knife. And he comes with his mallet. Again, very cleanly, no blood, not dirty at all. They're some of the most cleanest cannibals you'll ever meet. Probably the go-to would be displaying him with the chainsaw, which is likely what I'm going to be displaying him with in a second. Of course, before we do that, we'll run through all his posability, which let's do that right now. For Leatherface's, Ultimate Leatherface's posability, his head rotates all the way around, a hinge up and down, and technically, because of the nature of the ball joint, you can also pivot the head back and forth, and, you know, in varying degrees of how exactly you want that to look. Shoulders hinge outward, as well as you can rotate the arms all the way around, bend at the elbow, a rotation in the forearm, rotation in the hand, and that hinges back and forth. Then you get to the torso, which actually works both as a swivel and as a ball joint that hinges up and down and also rotates back and forth. Uh, luckily, the, uh, the apron is just loose enough that you can move the torso side to side and it doesn't seem to really get in the way. Uh, the legs split out. Sorry, the legs split out. Forward and back, bend at the knee, rotate the lower leg, and last but certainly not least, the feet technically can rotate all the way around. I don't know why you would want to be doing that, but just in case you were interested. And you have an ankle rocker back and forth. Peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Leatherface benefits actually from being one of the uh, the many figures that NECA produced. That stands perfectly fine. Don't have any issues whatsoever. If you want to get a little bit more creative, of course, where he's running and chasing down somebody with a chainsaw, then again, you may want to use a display stand to accomplish that. And speaking of display stands, that's exactly what I've made use of for final looks. The figure can stand, but by the nature of having his legs spread and his knees bent like this, it was probably easiest and safest for the figure to put him on a display stand so he wasn't going to topple over on me. Uh, he still is one of my all-time favorite ultimate figures from NECA Toys of the horror variety of still and kind of graduate towards the uh, gravitate towards the uh, Jason Voorhees is my all-time favorite, but I really do love the Leatherface, and all the more reasoning why I wanted to go back to this slightly older figure, because I think he deserved a better coat of paint, so to speak, with better lighting and better camera work than what we had to look at when we first looked at this guy on this channel. Um, I think to this day, this figure still holds up rather well, and I hope the NECA Toys will consider giving us more 7-inch plastic Leatherface figures. I mean, at the very least, they've done a whole bunch of retro cloth figures, which I've also done on this channel. But my heart, I think, goes towards more the 7-inch plastic variety. Even though I know retro cloth figures have a plastic body underneath, I still gravitate towards more the traditional action figures, I think, than the retro cloth figures. So while I uh, encourage uh, NECA Toys to continue to release retro cloth figures, I hope they will also consider going back and giving us some more ultimate figures that we've seen, and maybe uh, figures that we haven't seen before in plastic form. Uh, maybe some more continued looks at Leatherface figures from the different movies. At the very least, not that it's ever going to happen, but I'd love to see a cross-dressing Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation. I think that's probably wishful thinking. Probably may never happen, but at the very least, if NECA can give us a cross-dressing leather face uh, in retro cloth, I'll still consider myself very happy, a very happy collector. Today, we were having a look and revisiting the NECA Toys Ultimate Leather Face from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of the other NECA figure reviews, or specifically, more Texas Chainsaw figure reviews, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's playlists on this channel for both and you can go back and watch those videos at your viewing pleasure. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, Bunkos. It'll guarantee that you'll never miss future videos coming onto this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching. As you always do, I'll see you next time.